Hi guys, now, we've had the trial. Tom is convicted of rape, which is a capital crime, which means he's going to prison for the rest of his life or he will be going to death row. And we have Atticus who's saying, you know what? We have appeals. An appeal is when you go back to the court and you say, hey, my trial wasn't fair or it wasn't done correctly and I want another chance. And Atticus tells him, away from, away from this county, away from this city, because appellate courts are up in big cities. He goes, we can have a better outcome. So Atticus says he knew he was going to lose this one, but that he thinks he can overturn it on appeal. And Tom is completely devastated. Now Atticus starts going about his life, but we have a problem. Bob Ewell has decided that Atticus made him look bad and now he's going to hurt Atticus. So they meet each other on the street and he spits in Atticus's face. What is Atticus's reaction? Like, what does that tell you about Atticus? Now, a lot of you guys are like, he should bite his punk face. No, because he understands that if he has any retaliation, that's the next one. If he has any retaliation, if anything is done to Mr. Ewell, who's he going to go take it out on? That's number two. Three, Tom Robinson's appeal will be held in a bigger city away from Maycomb. How do you think this will affect the verdict? Justify your answer. With nobody having to live with next to the person who let this guy go without having any thoughts or feelings about the people involved. If it's a jury just on the other part of Alabama, would it be different? It's up to you. Just justify your answer because you can be right or on either side of the fence on that one. Why can't Miss Maudie sit on a jury? Now, this is one of those things. Would there have been a difficult verdict if she and others like her could have? So Miss Maudie, um, they find out why she can't sit on a jury. And Miss Maudie knew Tom didn't do it. And she's very adamant that, that had he had nothing to do with it. And Miss Stephanie Crawford's a little nasty about it, but we're not going to talk about that. But Miss Maudie, she can't sit on the, the jury. Why? And if people like her could have, do you think there would have been a different verdict? Why, do you, why don't the people who live in the work in the town sit on juries? What do you think of this reasoning? Now, they tell you exactly why everybody who actually lives in the town never sits on a jury. And it's kind of disgusting. They get out of it. Why do they get out of it? And what do you think of this reasoning? Does it make sense? And eh, Or is that kind of like low? You tell me. Who is, who is the holdout on Tom's jury? This is a shocker. There's one person who refused to change their vote. They were like, not guilty. End of story. And they had to sit there for hours and be yelled at and be browbeaten and being, and being told, no, you're wrong, until finally they just gave up. But one person does holds out on it. You tell me, like, why is this? Oh, my goodness. Why is this particularly ironic that this person decided they're not going to convict him. He didn't do it. It's a shocker. Why does Alexandria say Scout cannot invite Walter over? Now, we're going to show that there is not only bigotry, but there's also elitism in Maycomb County. So we have racism, but we also have, to have classism. And Alexandria literally proclaims that Walter Cunningham is trash and therefore he cannot be with them or be their friend and we get to take a look at there's not only a stratification within um race black versus white we also have within white and within black we saw that over with calpurnia there is a stratification based on a lot of things from education to money to how long your family's been there there's a ton of it and so we start seeing that, you know what, it's, it's terrible what other people will do to each other just because they have a difference. Now, the author includes a scene where Jim shows his sister his chest hair to underline the fact that he's growing up. She then has him discuss the social hierarchy of Maycomb, coming to the conclusion that it is education that separates the different social circles. Meanwhile, Scout says that all people are the same. What is the author trying to show the reader? So we have this discussion and Jim takes her into his room 
after Auntie says that Walter Cunningham is trash and, you know, Scout's really upset, she starts crying. And he sits her down and he tries to make her laugh. And then he says, you know, you have to, you know, don't argue with her because there's really no point is what he's trying to tell her. There's no point. She's going to believe what she believes. But he also kind of defines how the strata, how the different classes are based on how much education they've got. And she's like, no, no, there's just good people. There's just, we're all the same. And he's like, I used to believe that too. And then he shuts down. Why does the author include this? What is she trying to show us? Now, be good. Have a wonderful week. See you later.